Well, hey everyone, I am back from Flight Fest. I'm semi rested <laughs> from such a long event, and especially the heat this year. I, for those who are new, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy your time here and that you learn something, especially. So, without further ado, let's go over what happened with the jug at Flight Fest. <laughs> Stuff like Freak Ball does over here. Yeah, the, the yeah. Captain OCD. No, yeah, a little bit. I think yeah. he's got some problems. What do you think? We should start a fund so he can get some counseling or something. You know, he he's a very uh, focused kind of guy. Um, the kind of guy that would put eleven thousand rivets on an RC airplane. <laughs> that that that's how, that's yeah. And, and there's got to be a support group out there for that. Kind oh, of I'm thing. sure there is. Yeah, there has to be. But we, we just don't know where that support group is. Well, yeah, they keep it pretty secret, I think, because you know they're very controlling and post kind of like the Illuminati kind of thing. Huh? Yeah, it's the rivet naughty. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I just don't understand why he's flying it here because we've already had one large P-47 taken out of the sky by a little foamy airplane. I kind of think he's got a death wish. Well, you know, some people just have to show off, I guess. <laughs> Pat, we're talking about trying to get a support group together for Josh, you know, because anybody that doesn't have any rivets has something wrong, you know, there's got to be a counseling or yeah, some support that. group he can go to. Yeah, I think, I think we need to put together uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, probably a fun support group. Um, I don't know how we're going to break this habit, but we have to figure it out. Yeah, because he, he's just making the rest of us look really bad. It makes us all look bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the big question, is that impressive to you to look at That's that kind nice of craftsmanship? Yeah, you I like all the rivets. And... Do you look at that as a waste of time? No. You're no. rad. Put the planes in the air after falling, the killer's flying, it's over the black time. Thanks, y'all. Take it off, right to left. Take it off, right to left.
At this point in the flight, I encountered a couple of brownouts. I'm estimating at about five because it was a number of times I had to correct the airplane and it wouldn't correct. And the signal kept coming coming back and going out, etc. So I decided to just go ahead and land the plane. But because of the brownouts, the landing gear wouldn't come down. And then I got one gear and then I got two. And as soon as I saw two, I threw the flaps. I just through them I've got a delay and I had fully commit to land because of that radio interference. It was at this particular moment that I noticed my shadow on the runway and it was heading straight for the sign <laughs> and so knowing that it was about noon it was right after the first combat of the day uh, i knew that i was pretty much on track to hit a stake so i wanted to be safe but the winds and were in such a way that i knew that there was a possibility of it pushing the tail and if the tail was pushed, it would be pushed out. And that would mean that the airplane would go toward the crowd. So I literally made a split second decision. And you can see here where I hesitated and I started to correct to get away from the stake. And uh, I just backed off of that. I corrected and just fully commit to, to land straight. And if I hit a stake, I hit a stake. If I veer off, great added bonus. So it looked like it was going to be a great landing, and I figured I was going to hit a stake given how far out it was, and then I forgot that my great buddy Mike Finley was there, and I hit the stake thankfully before I hit him. Black and white photos. That's realistic. Yeah, do black and white photos. Yeah, it was fine. Damage one. Except for the giants. Yeah, you're right. Fix it up. Come, Mike. I rolled my angle. I didn't get hit by the plane, though. Thankfully, the sign was in the way. <laughs> Which is why I stayed behind the sign. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I rolled my ankle. So, as you can see, I have a new souvenir on my wall. The uh, probably most ironic thing about this event is I made the stakes and I put the stakes out. <laughs> and I crashed into the stakes. Uh, not the only one, uh, but I was the only one to take them out. Uh, however, I do want to make something absolutely perfectly crystal clear. Number one, this is not an AMA sanctioned event, although you are required to fly with AMA certification, but also you sign a waiver of safety of injury or whatever so that the Furies are not liable. And also I had spoken to Mike Finley about being out there to take photographs. And uh, I told him that I was okay with him being out there, but anything ha can happen and he was warned and he acknowledged that. And so we had an agreement before he even went out there for that flight. Now, I don't want anyone to get upset about uh, unsafe practices here because this is Flight Fest and things are just different at Flight Fest. It's so much more of a free for all. I chose to fly right after a combat event because I figured the majority of people will be heading off the line and not necessarily be flying. So, and that was, that was a safe bet. There weren't many people in the air. 
um, I had interference. Most people in the past have have never had, or if I, I've never heard of it in the past, we've never encountered any radio interference on FR Sky at Fury Field. This year, however, was very, very different. There were a number of people that had brownouts. There were a number of people that lost planes because of, of signal issues this year. And we believe it's because of an additional oil derrick or pump jack at the field. Uh, and we believe that um, it's, it's shooting out 2.4 gigahertz bursts to communicate to somewhere. We had heard some issues with the other uh, oil derrick at the far left end of the field in years past. Um, so, I mean, we, we really can't explain it any other way. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, as soon as I, as I had that issue, because it was coming in that, you, know, you guys saw, the, the plane was coming straight at the, at the field where the people were. And this is a 15-pound airplane. There was there was no way there was no way I was going to risk having that again. Um, so I I landed as safely as possible, and um, you know I'm I'm going to stick by that I did the right thing because that's what I do when I fly. Everything is about flying safe, and even that split-second decision can make the difference of someone going home, not in a good way. Uh, to to be with their families and um, you know I'm I'm the flight safety person uh, one of them at the event and um, you know th this is part of how I fly it's just being very responsible but you know we still had fun uh, we have a great story to tell because we're we're all such good friends there and really when I when I looked at the damage it's very superficial. There is no major structural damage. This is right where the wheel well is in the wing. So we're really talking about a couple of minor formers, some balsa sheeting, and the finish work. It's really not that much work to repair this. And that's sort of what I'm excited about. I'm excited to share with you guys that we have a little bit more to do on the P-47. And I'm pretty sure that I can finish it up before my next event in August. So that's what's going to be next. I had a couple of ideas in, that I was going to shoot when I came back from Flight Fest. But, you know, this is one of those situations where so many people just take an ARF that has been crashed and they just throw it away. Because they're like, well, I didn't build it, so I don't know how to fix it. Sure you do. Sure you do. Because you have the skills. If you've done other builds before and you, and you put together an ARF and something happens... You have the skills in a lot of the situations. I would say the majority of situations to fix a balsa airplane like this. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go through and uh, the next steps, next video is going to be about how I'm going to dissect and, and strategically pull away and look for opportunities to make the repair as smooth as possible. So that you guys, in your situations, you can apply the same techniques, the same ideas, uh, on, on analysis of your own planes that have enc encountered some damage. So, it, again, not a major issue. I, I was amazed because when you look at the strike, it's right within the prop arc. The prop didn't even strike the stake. And uh, even at that, uh, in talking with Mike Finley, um, he thinks that the, that the prop struck his ankle. And I, I believe it, given the shape of the bruise on his ankle, but, I mean, the the prop did not break. Um, it could have been a lot, lot worse, and it was very scary. Uh, and I think Mike may have learned a lesson about shooting photography out in the field, but we'll see. Uh, that being said, I had an amazing time. I got to fly quite a bit, got to meet some new people, hang out with some fantastic people. Uh, you know, I got to meet up with Adrian, and uh, what a wonderful, wonderful person he is. And he put together that airplane that that I, I gave to him, it, like, literally overnight. Uh, mostly because we had a big rainstorm that he could work through. But, uh, you know, it, it was a, just a great time. I got a lot of inspiration from some amazing things that you all brought and shared. So thank you for that. It means a lot to me that I go to this event and I continue to see the inspiration in other people and they're continuing to be imaginative and do wonderful things and and probably most of all 
seeing their their flying machines as I do, and that is as flying works of art.